NL matchup. It's the Miami Marlins going up against the Atlanta Braves. And we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. Just about set to go. Today's starting pitcher, Grant Holmes. And for some reason, he's not quite as effective here in front of his home crowd, Chris. Yeah, Boog, and the fans are well aware of that. For him, he's got to just not press and go out there and say, hey, I'm just treating this like any start. Home, on the road, it doesn't matter. My job is to focus on that catcher's mitt, attack hitters, and just try to move through a ball game. So if he can find that kind of focus, doesn't matter where he's pitching because he has good enough stuff to go out there and win a ball game. Xavier Edwards in the box here. Let's that one go for a ball. And a bunt towards third. Can't pick it up with the bare hand. Safe at first. No play. We'll see how they score this. It doesn't surprise anyone when he gets on base by dropping down a bunt. I mean... This is just the latest example of him using his speed to his advantage and showing off his skills with the bat. That was very nice. Stepping in, Jake Berger. Holmes, 28 years old. A former first-round pick back in 2014. Oh, and two now. One, two. Oh, two fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him up. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. Hit on the ground to the right side. And it goes just foul. Runner at first with no outs here. The punch out there. And one away. And now for the Marlins, Jesus Sanchez. And that's off the inside edge. And it's one to know. Man at first, one away. Close, but call the ball. And that's ball two. Chris, with that distraction and a speedy guy at first, he's in a favorable hitter's count. Well, if nothing else, I mean, this is a great spot for a hitter to be in. Out in front with the swing, and that is strike one. Fouled off. He was late. Left-hand hitter waits. And down on strikes. Two away. Oh, interesting. He's looking very comfortable out of the stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. So they haven't been able to move that runner up, get him in the scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. And now here's the Marlins DH, Jonah Bride. Move to first, and he's back in safely. Going one. Two gone, but the go ahead run is at first, and we're just getting started here in the top of the first. Good eye in that spot. Foul ball. Two outs. 
Pitch misses, and it's two and two. Just missed. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Lead runner makes the turn at second. And now they'll have runners on the corners with two away. Look, I don't think that pitch would have been called a strike, but he did such a nice job of pulling his hands tight to the body and just getting enough of the barrel on it to be hard enough back up the middle for a knock. So to a board and two out, scoreless game. Now the left fielder, Kyle Stowers. Now this is in the air down the line. And that is a foul ball. That one finds the zone, and that is strike two. Swung on, belted. Kelman going back. Holds it in on the warning track. Marlins strand a pair, and now the Braves, with their first chance to hit, were scoreless. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Back at Truist Park. And our pitcher in this game, Kyle Tyler. And Chris, pitching on the road has not been particularly kind to him. Yeah, and you don't want to be too quick to say that he can't pitch on the road. Sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of luck. It's not having a feel. Difference between the bullpen mound to the mound out there on the playing field. Don't know what it is, but I know this. He's got good enough stuff to overcome and get it done on the road as well as at home. So we'll see what he's able to do in this one. Hard hit, right side. The throw to first. One up, one down. Here's the Atlanta Braves lineup. In that cleanup spot, a key piece for this club, Matt Olson. And Boog, he's a fun at bat to watch. I mean, definitely a threat whenever he's got that bat in his hands. But for me, it's, it's all about the mechanics. They're so sound. And when he gets his foot down on time and starts his swing, so much consistency, that bat stays in the zone for a long time, and he squares up the baseball a lot. Here's Austin Riley. And a good eye there. Riley used to be a pitcher back in the day, Boog. In fact... Fans used to give him a hard time in his rookie ball days because he started the season with a long slump. He'd get messages questioning if he should go back to pitching, but turns out he made the right choice. Next offering is in for a strike. He must have been looking for something else because he gave up on that pitch a little early. It was right down Main Street. Probably not going to see a better pitch to hit in this at bat. Put the extra bases. Around first, digging for two. The throw in. In there safely. I'm sure he feels really good about that one. When you connect and it jumps off your bat like that, you're thinking double at the very least. Put a great swing on it, and man, he wasn't fooled at all. One out, runner at second. Here's Marcelo Zuna. What a season it's been for him. He has supplied a lot of power and that average. On the ground to the left, and that's just foul. Man, it's second. And there's a foul ball. Next offering upstairs. It's a good take. And another ball. Riley, the runner at second with one away. Struck him out without a swing. Couldn't pull the trigger on a fastball at the knees. Most guys are very aggressive when they see the stakes out there on the base paths and can't understand why he wasn't ready to swing the bat. You've got to be ready to swing the bat in a situation like that with the go-ahead run in scoring position. That one is absolutely belted. Reaching for it, makes the catch. Well, that one had extra bases written all over it. Not today, he said. Left his feet up in the air. Just a beautiful catch to end the inning.
And welcome back to the ballpark. Top of the second. Here's the third baseman, Emmanuel Rivera. The wind and the pitch. That one finds the corner, and it's 0-1. Well, the key to his success is getting ahead early in the count. He cannot afford to go deep in the counts. Doesn't have a ton of swing and miss stuff, so he's going to have to work efficiently. The 0-2. Got him swinging. Well, take a look at the three-pitch sequence here. Pretty simple in terms of putting them away at the plate. Once you're ahead 0-2 as a pitcher, you can really expand the zone and see how aggressive that hitter is going to be trying to protect and battle. And right there, clearly he was in swing mode, but all you can do is hope to foul that off. Nick Gordon, the next up for the Marlins. And first offering is fouled off. And a pitch. This to third. Over to first. Two up, two down in the top of the second. The second baseman, Two outs, base is empty. Vidal Brujan, the next up for the Marlins. Pitch is in there. 0 and 1. No score here in the second. That misses the zone at one and one. One and one. Next offering is outside. Two down, nobody on. Pitch misses. Three and one now. Out towards right center field. Solaire gets under it. Makes the grab, and that's the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Back here in Atlanta, we head to the bottom of the second. Here's the veteran shortstop, Orlando Arcia. Now the right-hander ready to go. Still no score. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Now he'll turn for second. And he's got a leadoff double. Didn't take long to get a result for that at bat. Just a cookie down the middle. I mean, those are the ones you dream about. The ones in the cage, you're just hoping you get in the ball game. Right down the middle, not a whole lot of velocity right on top of it. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. And now it's Travis Darno with the play. Just missed. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. Kicks and fires. And a foul ball. Runner in scoring position. Nobody out. Bottom half of inning number two. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Righty to the plate. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Not what you're looking for after the leadoff double. A strikeout, and there's one away. Here's Eddie Rosario. It's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion, and he's in full speed. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Rip to third. Throws the first in time. It. 
Here's Jared Kelnick. Taken high in the draft, he's had that top prospect label over him since he put on a professional uniform, but at some point that starts to go away and you've got to produce at the big league level. First pitch misses. This lineup's going to have to find a way to make him work a little harder out there on the mound. I mean, he is just mowing him down. He's settling in. You've got to make him uncomfortable. Maybe step out of the box, call timeout, do whatever it takes. And the 1 0. Ripped, but it curls foul. Man on second, two down. That one fouled off. The one two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That's the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. We play two full, no score. And we're back. Well, here we go. Top of the third scoreless game. And at the plate for Miami, Nick Fortes. Holmes back to work. And that drops in for a strike. Next pitch is outside. Late on that fastball. I think he was sitting off speed there. Foul ball still a one and two count. And a pitch. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. The pitch. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. And a one two. Caught him looking for the K. And up next for Miami, Xavier Edwards. Line drive, caught. Nothing you can do about those as a hitter. Even though you know that, they still drive you absolutely crazy. And now the first baseman, Jake Berger. He's 0 for 1. There's the strike. Outside. And the count even one and one. The one one is fouled off. Here comes a pitch. Battling here as he fouls it away. Here's a one two. That's down and in. Top of the third, no score. Got it by him for the K. And one, two, three, go the Marlins. And we are still scoreless. Set for the bottom of the third. Here's the second baseman, Whit Merrifield. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. And a foul ball. The pitch. This one in the air center field. Settles under this one. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. 
One down. Now that's a tough play for the infielder ranging back into the outfield. There's part of him that's saying, hey, where are you at, outfielder? Call me off. But he stayed focused and made a nice catch right there. Jorge Soler up at the plate. Grounded out his first time. And ball one. One out, base is empty. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tied him up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. And now two and one. And that's in for a strike. Goes down looking. Now the number two hitter, Austin Riley, doubled his first time up. Right through there for a strike. That one ripped back there. In one hops off the wall, should be extra bases. Throw to second, not in time, he's there easily. Everything came together for him. That pretty much split the zone down the middle, and those are the ones where you got to make them pay. And it's scored position with two away. Next is the designated hitter, Marcelo Zuna. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Well, they're looking to get on the board first here after that clutch two-out double made this inning interesting. The 1-0. -oh. Swings through that one out in front that time. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Clearly, he was sitting on a fastball right there and just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for it. Chases that one out of the zone, and the inning is over. So, no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one left. Three innings complete. We're tied, nothing, nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark. Start of the fourth, and now for the Marlins, Jesus Sanchez. And here it comes. Popped up right side, Olsen under it. Makes the grab, one away. No, that was a pitch you got to crush. Unbelievable that he missed it right there, and I'm telling you, he is going to be frustrating with himself until his next at bat. And now here is Jonah Bride, and he's already singled in this game. Fouled off down the right side. Bride, 28 years old, and they traded for him earlier this year. That one ripped left field. And it hits the fence. Around first, heading for two. Rosario whips it in quickly. They hold the runner at second, so another base hit could get us our first run in this one. All over that one right there. He absolutely ripped that ball out front and almost got it out of here, man. Just a really strong balance swing and a fraction of an inch different on the bat, and it is probably out of here. Now let's see if they can put up the first run of the game. Man at second with one away. Here's the left fielder, Kyle Stowers. 0 for 1 with a fly out to center. And that's in for a strike. That one a little bit high. And now it's even 1 and 1. The Marlins with a chance to score first. Top half of inning number four. On the ground right side. 
Oh, can't pick it up cleanly. No throw. That's an error, and everyone is safe. Hard to tell exactly what went wrong right there. That was a fairly routine ground ball, but he just couldn't get it to stick, and the glove might have taken his eye off it a little early. But regardless, you're going to have to work around that error. So one out with two aboard. Emmanuel Rivera will hit next. Struck out swinging his first time. That one catches the zone. That's strike one. Well, all eyes on the double play ball in this spot. No better way to get out of this inning. Right on third. Stowers over at first with one away. And that one fouled off. And there's a ball. Hit on the ground might be two. Riley over to second, and that's two. Well, we can never overstate it. Pitcher's best friend right there. Double play, gets out of the jam, saves some pitches. Bottom four, here's Matt Olson. Tyler back to work. Edge of the zone called a strike. Going one. For Matt, a pretty impressive resume. A first round pick back in 2012. The Braves extended him eight years, 106. This one swung on and hit well. Way back there. And that ball is out of here. That's worth the price of admission. His second homer of this series, and that gives him a lead. It's 1-0. He absolutely feasts on right-handed pitching and devours that one for a homer. And you can see that's what he expects of himself at bat after at bat. He's that confident. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. Here's Orlando Arcia, doubled in his first A.B. Fought off foul. One of the things from 2023, great counting stats for Matt Olson, but the hard hit rate was through the roof. Trying to get him to chase on the changeup that time. That one ripped left field. And an automatic double as it hops the fence. The automatic double kind of feels like enjoying cruise control in your car, boo. You don't need to keep the pedal down as you cruise into second base. Just no worries in the world. You know what? He put a really good swing on that one. And here's the catcher, Travis Darno. 0 for 1. He struck out swinging last time. And there's a foul ball. No outs. Runner on second. Righty delivers. That one misses. Now one and two. Strike three. Got him looking on the changeup. Now the left fielder, Eddie Rosario, grounded out his first time. Foul ball there. Left hand batter waits. That's ripped, and this one could be extra bases. Arcia around third. He'll score easily. It's 2-0. 
Round second, digging for third. The relay, not in time. He's safe. Well done, drives in the run. That's a good sound coming off the bat, man. And as he connected out front and ripped it into the outfield, that's one of those swings where you just don't even feel the ball hit the barrel. That's a pure stroke. Jared Kellner now at the plate. He was a strikeout victim his first time. Just missed. Gets the call. One ball, one strike. And the right-hander deals way out front for strike two. Very well executed changeup right there. If he can command the fastball consistently, that's going to be an important pitch in terms of him turning this outing around. Fouls it off, still one and two. One away with a runner at third. The one two in this situation he's trying to get you to pop something up or jam you it's a really good take knowing you got an opportunity to drive in a run here two two now bounce to the right out number two and another run comes in so important to really lock in on an at bat like this it seems easy with the infield back but you've got to make sure you put the ball in play put it on the ground brought that run in with Merrifield up to the plate 0 for 1 so far that one's upstairs ball one one and oh two down nobody on we're here in the bottom of the fourth that one misses, and the count is 2-0. Well, usually a high level of confidence when you're facing a young pitcher out there on the mound. In this situation, ahead 2-0. He's put himself in a really good spot. Next offering is in for a strike. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. And another ball. The only adjustment he needs to make is his target. If you aim at the outside corner, that slider's going to end up way off the plate. Perhaps look a little more down the middle, and you get it right where you want it. Three, two. And down on strikes he goes. Picks up strikeout number seven. Three runs on three hits, one a solo shot. On to the top of the fifth we go. It's the Braves three and the Marlins nothing. Back at Truist Park, we go to the top of the fifth. Here's the center fielder, Nick Gordon. The right-hander back to work. This one high in the air to left center. Rosario sizes this one up. And a quick out number one. Almost a loud start to the inning on that first pitch. Man, he's going to want that one back, no doubt. And now it's Vidal Brujan. A little bit high. Ball one. Well, the offense has gotten going, and a pitcher wants to go out there, have a real quick inning, get those guys back into the dugout so those bats can stay hot. And that's outside. Two and oh. Bases empty, one away. And we're at the top of the fifth. Next pitch is outside. Well, I would expect in this 3 0 count, you're taking all the way. See if he'll walk you. And that's ball four. 
Maybe a little loss of focus on the mound right there. Pretty much gifted him first base with a quick free pass. Man at first with one gone. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Fortes. And a foul ball. Bruhan stands at first with one out. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. Quick throw back in. Lead runner holds it second with one gone. He was all over that one. I don't know how he's able to shoot that pitch the other way and still put something on it. That pitch was inside, and he let it get really deep. So pretty incredible hands to fight it off and still get good wood on it. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Grant Holmes will depart, and as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. Here comes a new arm for the Braves, Spencer Schwellenbach. Well, at this point of the ball game, we're talking about middle innings, and you need a little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. Xavier Edwards gets a chance to hit here. There's the strike. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Just overmatched on that fastball right there, and it wasn't like he was set up for it by something off speed earlier in the at bat. Just came right after him with three straight, and he had no answer for it. And here's the first baseman, Jake Berger. He's been really clutch with runners in scoring position this season, so they'll have to be extra careful in this matchup. Not the easiest thing when you're talking about a guy that's, you know, perhaps is going to be in the rotation, you know, maybe a long relief guy to not start an inning, to come into an inning with pressure on it and, and try to get yourself comfortable. Breaking ball, and that got him. Oh, he's only an out away from getting through the inning, but he just lost control for a brief moment there. It's not the end of the world, but don't let one mistake turn into another. Get your focus back right here. Sanchez up to the plate for the third time as he looks at one down low. Base is loaded, two down. And there's the strike. Gets him to chase after that one. Big time gem right there. I hate it as a hitter, but standing in center field, you can't help but chuckle a little bit. Fights that one away, still one and two. Right handed reliever. Ground ball, left side. Whips it across. Out to escape a bases loaded jam unscathed. And the Marlins leave all three. They trail in this one, three nothing. Back here in Atlanta, John Shabby with my buddy Chris Singleton. It's set to get us started. Bottom five, Jorge Soler. The right hander back to work. Swing and a miss. And it's 0 and 1. Action in the pen down there. Number 71 up and throwing. Number 48 getting cranked up as well. The pitch. He swings and fouls one off. 
and a pitch. Chases the fastball up the ladder, struck him out. It's almost like he's telling the guys in the bullpen, stand down, I got this. Austin Riley, next up for the Braves. Missed with a changeup, and that is ball one. And the slider just misses. Kicks and deals. And a good eye there. A rare three ball count here. He's been throwing strikes all day. Got to be ready to hit if you're in the box. Swings through that one for strike one. Three balls and no strikes. Three one and he couldn't come up with it. Boog, do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at bats? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that if they gave the pitcher a false scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. Hammers that one deep left field and forget it. A gigantic blast. And they throw a pair on the board. It's five zip. And that shot makes their grip on the lead even tighter. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. And now Matt Olson up to hit. Just missed. One of the things that helped Olson in 2023, a stance adjustment, and that as well kept him more balanced for less swing and miss. One down, base is empty. This one smoked on its way out of here. Another one. Back-to-back -back homers. His second home run of the game, and they add to the lead. It's 6-0. Another home run. This is turning into BP. Back-to-back -back jacks, and this club is fired up right now, Boog. I mean, this is the kind of thing where you really start to notice hitters in a lineup feeding off each other, and the collective confidence just continues to grow. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Kyle Tyler won't go any further, and this is one he'd like to forget. Back with a new arm after this. Number 71 on the pitch here. Well, home runs have been a problem this year. Not doing a great job keeping the ball in the yard so far this season. So we'll see if that factors in. One out, base is empty. So now to the plate for Atlanta, Orlando Arcia. Going one. The pitch and a foul ball. Twings and misses. It's a strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Travis Dardo next up for the Braves. 
who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. There's a strike. Two gone, base is empty, but three runs across. Last half of inning number five. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Yeah, that's a little bit high. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Right-hander kicks deals. Foul ball still a one and two count. And the pitch. Two outs, bases empty. And that's a fair ball. He really shot that one down the right field line and somehow found a way to keep it from slicing foul. One thing that was great about the approach is head was down all the way through the pitch, and that's how you do it. And now, Eddie Rosario. Worm burner into the outfield for a knock. Throw stops the lead runner at second. Two on and two out. Now, here is Jared Kelman. Jack Swing went around. Strike one. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Good eye right there. Got him. Inning ends, and that stops the bleeding. But two round trippers in this inning. The long ball was working. It's now a 6 nothing ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. And we're back. Top six. And now Jonah Bride. Jonah. Clearly down in this ball game, and you can't look at the deficit and try to get it all back in one swing. It's got to come one at bat at a time and even shrink it down smaller, pitch to pitch. Make that guy on the mound work to get you out. You know, these Marlins finding ways to get on base, but they still need help driving them home. They've had their chances with runners in scoring position, but nobody's been able to deliver a big hit in those situations. Just missed. And you got to give some credit to the other side as well. They've been able to get out of a few tough jams, but frustration is mounting for this offense, no doubt. Top of the zone, and it's called a strike. The wide to kick the pitch. Fastball for a strike. Swings and misses on the fastball up in the zone for the strikeout. He's really good hitting the baseball the other way, so credit the pitcher for having him out in front of that pitch. Clearly, he had him fooled. Kyle Stowers, the next up for the Marlins. Just missed. I can't play around with him here. It's a six-run lead at this point. Got to attack hitters, even if you give up a solo shot. Just a weak fly ball this time, and it stays fair. And he's got a double. Well, that's one of those knocks where you almost expect to get some jabs from your teammates when you get back to the dugout. That one probably had no business ending up as a base hit, but he got just enough of it to muscle it to the outfield. And 
That pitch was well in off the plate. A tough one to handle, but he gets rewarded. Could be a chance here for them to start clawing back into this ballgame. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. That one's back. Bangs off the wall. Runner comes in from second to score, and they cut the lead. It's 6-1. Well, clearly he was ready to hit right there. Absolutely blasted that one into the gap, but just didn't have quite enough to clear the wall out there. Maybe a little more elevation under it, and it carries over, but that's a swing you'll be happy with every time. So digging in, Nick Gordon. Up the middle, and that one handled. Throws the first in time. Fastball groove right down the middle. Usually a lot of damage done with that pitch. A hard grounder, but he wanted to get that ball in the air, maybe drive it into the gap. Vidal Brujan, the next to hit. Swings and blasts one deep to left center, and no one can get there. In comes the run from third to trim the lead. It's 6-2. Safely into second. He's got a double. Went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle. Showed a willingness to drive that pitch the opposite way. Didn't get jumpy. Didn't try to pull the ball. He let it get deep. Took the barrel right to it and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. Here's the catcher, Nick Fortes. One for two. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Riding to the plate. Wouldn't chase that time. And that one fouled off. Runner at second, two down, and we're at the top half of the sixth. Next offering is in for a strike. Swing at a bouncer, and foul ball. Two outs. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Inning over, and it could have been worse. They get two runs on three hits. No errors and one left. 9-1 and two scheduled to hit in the home half of the sixth. Braves six and the Marlins two. Bottom of the inning. Digging in. Whit Merrifield. The second baseman. Whit Merrifield. And the pitch. Bottom of the zone and a called strike. Swings through that one for strike two. Swings and misses. And now one away. Well, a pretty big contrast in that at bat. First couple of pitches down in the zone, and those are competitive pitches, so you have to respect it as a hitter. And then with two strikes, ran that fastball by him up high, and there was just no catching up. And it's fouled away. One down, base is empty. That one fouled off. And now one and two. And a pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. That's
at the belt and fires. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Slider got him for strike three. Third time he struck out in this one, and definitely an individual performance you want to flush. He just hasn't looked very comfortable up there. Just one of those days. But when you're still winning the ball game, at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W. That one hammered left field. Stowers going back. Drops for a hit. He couldn't run it down. Safe at second with a double. Third hit for him this afternoon. Having himself a really nice game at the plate. Challenged him with the fastball right in the heart of the zone, and he was clearly ready to jump all over it. Now in for the Braves, Marcelo Zuna. Can't forget the two-run shot he launched out of here in the fifth. Yeah, one of the biggest swings of the game, Boog, as he looks to make even more of an impact in this at-bat right here. That misses the zone, and that's ball one. Riley stands at second with two gone. Just missed. He hasn't wanted to challenge him. Both of those pitches off the plate away. Don't expect anything down the heart of the plate. You may just have to be patient and take your walk here. Man at second. That yeah. one's in there. And a count two and one. And the righty deals. Just off the inside edge. Get ready for some action here. Good RBI guy at the plate. Runners in scoring position. And a hitter's count. And a liner out into right center for a base hit. Around third. The throw into second. And he's out trying for two. But one run does score in the play before the inning ends. But they push across one run on two hits. No errors, no one left. We're through six full. It's the Braves seven and the Marlins two. All set for the start of the inning. Now it's the Marlins leadoff hitter, Xavier Edwards. Fought off foul. The wind of the pitch. In the air to left center. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. That's a really nice play ranging back into the outfield for that catch. We all know those can be a little tricky, especially if the wind's swirling around out there. And at the plate for Miami, Jake Berger. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Strike two. Quickly into an 0-2 count. Both pitches were down in the zone. I think you set your sights a little bit higher because you'll have a tendency to chase if you look down in that area. Dominating strike out there on just three pitches, and that's what a good power pitcher can do to you. If he's hitting his spots, filling up the strike zone, sometimes he bats over before it really begins. That one hammered center field way back there. And caught on the warning track. Not quite enough behind that one. Starting to run out of outs as they're unable to chip away. Seventh inning stretch time. It's the Braves seven and the Marlins two. New pitcher for the Marlins, number 48. Well, they need someone to stop the bleed and keep the score right where it is. Seems like a tough task today with the way this lineup is swinging it. Matt Olson up to the plate. And the way he's going in this one, we've been waiting for his spot to come around again. All right, listen, everyone. Stop what you're doing right now. This guy's got two home runs already. Now he's going for number three. And he deals. And that's outside. 
Ball one. Signs of activity in the pen for the Marlins. Number 62 getting ready to go. The wind and the pitch. And another ball. Two balls, no strike. That misses, and now 3-0. and So definitely a little wild right out of the gate. Well, it could be a little tough coming from the bullpen mound to this mound, but you've got to find a way to get ahead in the count quickly. He has it. We'll see how this at-bat turns out. And a ground ball to first, and he grabs it in foul ground. Inside ball four. So a man aboard next to hit Orlando Arcia. Three pitch strikeout last time up. Got to put up more of a fight in this one. Right through there for a strike. The pitch. There's a swing and a drive. Gordon going back. And he brings it in on the warning track. Man at first. And now the catcher comes up to him. Travis Darno, one for three. Pitch is in for a strike. 0-1. Oh, Olsen leads off first with one away. Next offering is in for a strike. Good approach right there. You want to get something just a little higher that you can elevate. Stand on that double play. On the ground could be two. Off balance feed. There's one. Throw to first, but he beat it. Eddie Rosario, next up for the Braves. Ground ball right side, boots it. But they get the out at first, and that'll do it for the inning. Braves strand one, but they're still on top, seven to two. We go to the eighth. Now here's the Marlins DH. Jonah Bry. Here comes a pitch. Out to short. Can't glove it cleanly. But the throw to first gets him easily. And that's the first out. Here's the left fielder. Kyle Stowers. Just missed. Base is empty one away, and we're in the top of the eighth. Pulls that one foul. That one ripped. And that should be extra bases. Now around second, going for third. And he's got himself a triple. Two hits for him in this one. Both were extra bases. Got to feel good about that. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. Here comes A.J. Minter to the mound. This southpaw's been really good against left-handed hitters. Minter.
Now the third baseman, Emmanuel Rivera. RBI knock for him last time. Now a chance to drive in another run. Now fly ball to right center. Kelman sizing this one up. Brings it in. Runner tagging from third. He scores on the sack fly. It's seven to three. There you go. Nice little RBI there. It's a great at bat. Got the job done. Nick Gordon, the next up for the Marlins. Well, Boo, got to find ways to keep this inning alive. They're in striking distance. Can't give up now. That one's in there, 0 and 1. Movement in the bullpen. Ronaldo Lopez getting ready to come in for manager Brian Snicker. Bummer getting loose as well. Two down, nobody on. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Kicks and fires. Wouldn't chase that time. And another ball. Two outs. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. One run, one hit, no errors, and no one left. Home half of inning number eight straight ahead. It's the Braves seven and the Marlins three. Back at Truist Park, ready for the bottom of the eighth. And now it's going to be Jared Kelman. And here it comes. Going along. And that's in the dirt. Fouls it off, still one and two. And that just misses. Good slider down and in can be so hard to get on plane with. You're better off taking that pitch. That one in the dirt, three and two now. Spoils the two strike pitch and he'll see another. Clearly trying to stay back a little bit longer for that change up as he fouls that fastball back. Downstairs and it misses ball four. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. Got a great back and forth and that at bat. He had to lay off some really close pitches and somehow Boogie found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. Merrifield in now takes ball one off the plate. Kelmick aboard here at first with nobody out. The pitch. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Righty delivers. Two, two. And they'll do it again. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Slider got him for strike three. 
Well, that right there is just a pitcher's pitch, tailing away from the hitter, lowing away with some good action at the end. You know, even if he gets the bat to that ball, it's probably just a weak ground ball to the opposite side. I tell you what, that's a tremendous two strike pitch. Solaire, batting with one down, takes a strike. one now and there's a rocket into the outfield Kelman round second on his way to third coming home he scores and it's 8-3 nice double right there loud contact coming off the bat didn't get enough air under to drive it out of here but you'll take that swing and that result every time One out, runner at second. Austin Riley next up for the Braves. Three for three, and he's come up with three doubles. Gets the slider in there for a strike. Off the mark there. And one and one. One and one. Man at second. Gets a piece and stays alive. The pitch. Two and two. That misses, and that's ball three. Outside, and that is ball four. Second walk of the game for him, and he's been really patient at the play, a game plan that he's sticking to. He's just not going outside of what he's looking for up there. Two on with one out. Marcelo Zuna next up for the Braves. He's already homered here in this one. And downstairs. Foul ball there. Ball to strike. The pitch. He swings and fouls one off. Two on, one out. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Two away. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Hitters become defensive, and all of a sudden that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. So first and second with two outs. Matt Olson next up for the Braves. That misses off the outside edge. And now two and nothing. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. First and second, two down. Here are the bottom half of the eighth inning. Swing and a pop-up. Berger in position. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. The Braves add one on the RBI double. Last chance coming up here for the Marlins.
And welcome back to the ballpark. And now Vidal Brujan. Minter back to work. And that's outside. Off the plate inside, ball two. That one at the knees for a strike. In this situation, you expect the batters to be a little more patient, possibly take until they get a strike. With that, you don't want to miss your opportunity to get ahead early in the count. He didn't right there. Fouls one off, two and two. And now the lefty back to the mound. He's got it. Sends it to first. And the leadoff man retired here in the ninth. The Nick. Nick Fortes, the next up for the Marlins. Right through there for a strike. Missed with a changeup, and it's one and one. Base is empty, one away. You're at the top of the ninth. That one blasted deep to right. Solaire ranging back on it. Pulls it in on the warning track. So they're down to their final out. Xavier Edwards, the next up for the Marlins. A switch hitter batting right. Swing and a miss. In the on-deck circle, you really want to use that opportunity to see some pitches and time up the fastball. Last thing you want to do is miss a good, hittable fastball early in the count. Next offering is in for a strike. Minter is just one strike away. Off the mark there, and the count is one and two. That turns out to be a really good take right there, but you don't want to end this game with the bat on your shoulder. On the ground to third, and this should do it. And that'll do it. I don't care if you're a top team or you're a middle-of-the-pack team. Every ball club wants to be dominant at home. Winning a game like this just helps to boost the confidence and makes you look forward to coming out again for the next one. 8-3 the final in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.